new this morning on UT 10 News, students have a brand new option for dining inside the student union. Plus, Mudhens fans have come out of hibernation for opening day. And Ryan Kiesecker takes us to the ball diamond for a high scoring affair. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sydney Edwards. And I'm Keith Boggs. After months of anticipation, students finally have a new dining option in the Student Union. This morning, Steak and Shake opened its doors to the public. Alexis Wheatley joins us now live from the Student Union. Inside the new restaurant, what can you tell us about the grand opening? Well, Sydney, I've been here since 8 this morning, and the new restaurant has been the talk of the town. President Gaber also had the honor this morning of cutting the ribbon for the new Steak and Shake. The restaurant opened their doors at 10.30 a.m. Now, they will not be open 24-7, but the students can expect to pay the same amount as they would at any other Steak and Shake. Joining me now is Senior Director of Operations, Mario Toussaint. Mario, what can you tell us about the menu? Well, the menu is great. We have not only have the signature burger and the original burger, but we also have the Frisco and the grilled cheese and the chicken fingers. And if you want a salad, grilled or fried, we have that as well. That all sounds really, really good, Mario. So what else can you tell us about when students come to the counter? What can they expect? Well, students should bring their rocket dollars, dining dollars, and of course, cash and charge is always accepted. And just make sure you have a lot of fun. This is a great brand. Come on in and see us. And all, lots of, lots of options, Mario. Thank you so much. Now, Steak and Shake is open today, so stop in for a milkshake. Reporting live from the Student Union, I'm Alexis Wheatley for UT10 News. One in five women, as well as one in 16 men, are sexually assaulted while in college. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, more than 90% of these sexual assaults go unreported. These sobering numbers led the university to create a task force to combat the problem. The committee will assess UT policies related to sexual assault awareness and prevention. This is something that's a major issue. The goal of our task force is to actually produce recommendations in terms of what we're doing well and what we can do better. This task force is expected to be complete by fall 2017. It was opening weekend for the Toledo Mud Hens. That's right, Keith reporter Andrew Kirsten takes us to Fifth Third Field to experience the fun. It's opening day, the unofficial holiday for baseball fans everywhere and for the fans of the Toledo Mud Hens. It's when the weather warms up, spirits are lifted, and people can finally get outside to enjoy America's pastime. But in Toledo, we do it differently. Rooftop parties, ice cold drinks, delicious food. The fun never ends. The whole place shuts down, the streets are alive, all the bars and restaurants in the warehouse district are alive, uh, people everywhere, it's just a great atmosphere. After the up and coming Hensville has made its name to the people of Toledo, it's been the scene for pregame and postgame parties. Not into the party scene? Don't worry. During the game, the fun-filled atmosphere is for people of all ages. Uh, go Toledo! On opening day, last season is gone. It's a clean slate. And we can enjoy baseball once again. If you didn't have, to have a chance to come down here for opening weekend at Fifth Third Field, don't worry, the Mud Hens are back in town April 25th when they take on the Charlotte Knights. From Muddy, Madonna, I'm Andrew Kirsten for UT10 News. The 16-week semester will soon become a part of UT history. The university will adopt a new 15-week semester, which will include exams. The change will align UT with several other four-year institutions in Ohio. The decrease in total weeks will mean longer class times. The new class schedules will be 55 to 80 minutes long. One of the main reasons why the provost really wanted this to happen was to allow for a longer um, winter break. So winter break this coming year will be four weeks instead of the typical three. The changes will begin this fall. If you can make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, then you can make a difference in someone's life. The Bridge Club meets every other Friday at iHouse's cafeteria. At each meeting, the organization packs 200 sack lunches for the homeless. Each meal includes a PB&J, a bag of chips, and a cookie. Then on Saturday mornings, they hand out the sack lunches to the homeless in downtown Toledo. It's one thing to get a hot bowl of soup. It's another thing to have a portable meal that you can take and eat later on. The Bridges' next meeting is Friday, April 28th. One of downtown Toledo's newest additions is growing in popularity. That's right, Keith. 
Located under the Anthony Wayne Bridge is Middle Grounds Metro Park. Since its September 2016 opening, Middle Grounds has attracted many local residents, artists, and out-of-town visitors. The park includes half a mile of river frontage, 28 acres of land, and one and a half miles of meandering paths. The park also has the Rotary Roadhouse Shelter. Visitors can rent the shelter with up to 50 guests. Middle Grounds is receiving positive feedback from park goers alike. Oh, it's pretty amazing. You know, downtown Toledo really needed something like this. The location of Middle Grounds is also something many are finding favorable. Just to have an open area, you know, people can come and you know, stroll up and down the river and for some reason or other the Muddy Mommy just attracts people. <laughs> Middle Grounds will be officially opening a new off-leash dog area on Labor Day. Middle Grounds is not the last stop for the Metro Parks, as plans have been made to expand the park family with their soon-to-be second largest park near the Lake Erie shoreline at Howard Farms. Last Friday, the Easter Bunny hopped over to the Toledo Zoo. The zoo's annual Easter egg hunt gave animals the opportunity to find their own treats. The zookeepers hid paper mache jello jigglers and hard-boiled eggs in various exhibits. This fun-filled activity included special animal presentations for the kids. It allows them to see some really great, fun animal activity. It allows them to see animals doing natural behaviors in a, in a fun sort of way. For details on future animal fun at the zoo, just head over to our website, ut10news.com. I'm Ryan Kiesecker and this is your UT10 Sports Report. Over the weekend, both the softball and baseball teams took to the ball diamond in hopes to continue to climb in conference standings. But first, the softball team hosted Central Michigan at Scott Park on Friday. So here we go, UT sophomore Heather Webb on the mound for the Rockets. She was sensational, only allowing two hits in the game. Central Michigan's Rachel Knapp was equally as impressive as she tailed eight strikeouts. The game would go to extra innings, and in the top of the ninth, the Chippewas would break through with the game's first run as Allison Curtis sends one right to field, scoring Lacey Toll free from second. With one last chance for the Rockets to tie things up in the bottom of the ninth, Knapp would shut the door and complete the shutout for Central Michigan. After the loss, UT coach Kristen Butler gave insight on what they need to work on. You have to have clutch pitching, um, big defense, and, uh, and get those key hits when it matters. And so that's something that we've got to do uh, going into tomorrow is come up with some clutch hitting and, and try to get some back-to-back -back hits. The Rockets moved on and split their next two games in a doubleheader on Saturday. Tomorrow they go face-to-face -face with Michigan State up in East Lansing. After a 4-3 victory on Friday, the Rocket baseball team continued their series against Buffalo on Saturday. And it was an offensive showcase for both teams as there were a combined 24 runs scored in the first five innings. Senior Vinny Malero had a huge game for the Bulls with two home runs and nine RBIs. The UT's Matt Hansen would counteract Buffalo's big slugger as the junior drove in a career high seven RBIs of his own. And it was Matt Hansen who would be the difference as he drives in the Rockets 21st run of the game, giving them the overall advantage. UT Josh Kales would get the win as he went on in one and two third innings and was the only Rocket pitcher to not allow any runs in the game. The Rockets would enjoy a nice Easter win on Sunday, giving them the three-game sweep of the Bulls. UT will hit the road face-to-face -face the Dayton Flyers tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thanks, Ryan. That's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus and bios from all UT10 reporters, go to our website, ut10news.com. And remember, you can watch the live stream of our newscast production every Tuesday morning at 1030 on our YouTube channel. For Sydney Edwards, Ryan Kiesecker, and all of our crew, I'm Keith Boggs. Have a great week and stay tuned for more news from UT's campus.